Marbury Education, AS Sociology, Unit 2, Education and Methods. Paul Willis, Learning to Labour. Although this is a dated study, a good understanding of it is still quite useful for this module. Willis was interested in understanding why it was that working class males got working class jobs. For him, despite what the education system told young people, not everyone could be socially mobile, not everyone could be successful in education. As such, he understood how and why middle classes got middle class jobs, but why should the working classes seek out manual work with few prospects? Willis was unusual in that he came from a Marxist tradition, which is structural and macro in its approach to methodology, yet he chose a more interpretivist micro approach. For example, Willis got a job in the student canteen so he could observe his sample of non-conformist males. Willis learnt about their first order constructs through unstructured interviews, through varying degrees of participant and non-participant observation and through going on school trips. Willis said he just generally hung around and soaked up the atmosphere in the school. Willis found that the lads were not interested in the values of the school or in conforming to the instruction of the teacher. The instruction might be do some work or be quiet. Yet this was often subverted through the use of humour, what he referred to as the piss take. The instruction was not taken seriously because what the teachers were offering in terms of qualifications and aspirational ideas about getting a better job or career were not seen as relevant to the lads. The world they were interested in was the adult world of drinking, masculinity and the expectation of getting what they saw as a real job. And a real job for them was a manual job. The lads' attitude towards education and the world of work were developed as a result of their cultural experiences growing up in working class communities. They knew relatives and friends who had these manual jobs and these seemed real, available, and to them at least, attractive. Willis's study was also viewed as important because it demonstrated the formation of an anti-school counterculture. The lads actively went out of their way to challenge the teachers and the system. Unlike Bowles and Gintis, 1976, who saw the working class as manipulated and controlled through the hidden curriculum, Willis saw a different process at work. The working class males he studied rejected both the overt instructions and the subliminal or covert messages of the hidden curriculum. Yet the consequences of the hidden curriculum and the anti-school counterculture of the lads led to the same type of manual labour. The hidden curriculum socialised the working class to know their place and accept low paid manual work, whilst the counterculture produced educational failures destined for and well suited to monotonous labour. One might conclude that the working class culture Willis illustrated helped to ensure that successive generations stayed working class and stayed in low paid dead-end jobs. Methods link. You could answer the following questions. Is Willis's study objective? Can Willis's findings be generalised? What might you say about the size of Willis's sample? Is the study reliable? Is the study presenting a valid picture of social reality.